Well, are you ready to let go of those chains? Nobody? Are you ready to let go of those chains? Yeah. Okay, good. Just checking in here because we've got a lot to talk about this morning. And the topic, actually this whole month, and actually today's topic also, is spiritual freedom. And there's a difference between religious freedom and spiritual freedom, which most of you know. But religious freedom is the freedom in our country where we can belong to any group of like-minded people and follow their rules. It's usually an outside-in experience. And oftentimes in these type of communities, it can create us versus them or separation. Spiritual freedom is very different. Spiritual freedom is an inside job. Spiritual freedom is when we get to go inside of our hearts and we get to celebrate a higher power in any way we want to, with any terms we want. Spiritual freedom, moving from the inside out, leads us to a place of unity and freedom, just as Barbara said in that beautiful poem this morning. Actually, spiritual freedom equates to love. And I believe that this country was founded on spiritual declarations, spiritual idea, ideals that called us to look beyond the experiences of the day and keep our sights on something greater. When the Declaration of Independence was uh, um, founded, it wasn't founded, it was established, it was whatever it was. Anyway, um, 13 of the 13 states had slavery, legally, slavery. So when our beautiful Declaration of Independence says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, a few of these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It was a vision, it was a spiritual truth that was meant to be actualized and lived. And it took almost a hundred years for slavery to be abolished in this country. Yet it was a vision that this country stood upon. We're called right now to join together and again, move toward the ideals of things we don't see yet present here in our world, but we know in our hearts there are the spiritual truths and the ideals that keep us going and growing. Our founder, the founder of our tradition, our philosophy, our religion, Dr. Ernest Holmes said, um, the divine plan is one of freedom. The inherent nature of man is ever seeking itself in terms of freedom because freedom is the birthright of every living soul. It's our freedom is our birthright. It's here in us. Now it doesn't always matter the experience you're in to have the freedom of your heart and mind. And I'll talk about that in a minute. I was going to talk about that right now, but let me talk about that one in a minute. But it's, we have the freedom to decide how we're going to live. But you see, when Ernest Holmes said, it's our divine birthright is freedom, but it's a discovery we have to make for ourselves. We know that God doesn't put us in a box and say, well, you're bound until you follow these certain steps and then I will free you. No, we are born free. The, one, the only person or thing that puts any boundaries or chains on us is ourselves, in our mind, in our heart. And we need to be able to move through the experience the visual experience, see beyond what the eye sees to see something more, as all the great leaders that are on our wall have done, to see something more. We have the freedom to imagine something more at every moment. What else is there? What else is there for me? Now, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote a wonderful essay on circles, and he talks about the universe as being liquid and fluid and it moves like a circle. You and I get to decide if we keep going around the merry-go-round, repeating the same thing over and over again, or if we keep evolving in a spiral movement upward and upward and onward. Emerson went on to say, everything bends back to us. Now, if you think about the laws that we know and talk about here, the law of correspondence, the law of reciprocity, the law of cause and effect, the law of attraction, it's all about the attractive energy. Things come back there. So what we put out there is going to come back to us. And we need to learn how to use this power, this energy in us to create something better. 
Emerson went on to say, St. Augustine describes the nature of God as a circle. The nature of God is a circle with its center everywhere and its circumference nowhere. Meaning that God, the center of God is right within us. The center of God is within in each of us. It doesn't take one place that establishes itself, but it's everywhere present always. And we need to learn to use that power. That power is here, but how are we using it? We have the freedom to use it in any way we choose, we desire. But sometimes we put the limitation on ourselves. Anytime you or I say, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Anytime we say, there's not enough. We're putting a small circle around ourselves that keeps us bound. It's not life that binds us, it's our thoughts that bind us. Because in his essay on circles, Emerson goes on to say the only thing that can either limit our circles or expand them is our thought about ourselves and about life. So really what our declaration of independence is saying, what our spiritual truths and ideals are saying, we've got to love ourselves. We have to be who we are completely and love ourselves. And that's up to you and me to live that and do that. Actually, there's great freedom in limitation. Don't you love that? There's great freedom in limitation. And I don't mean holding on to it. The freedom that comes from limitation is the fact that you or I have the power to release it and reverse it at any time. We should get a little woohoo there because I know that not enough came out pretty quickly because we all experience, we live in a crazy world. We live in a world that's filled with chaos. And it's you and I that have to join together to hold this truth, not just for ourselves, but for each other. We get to choose what kind of life we live, no matter what the external experience is. I was reading in Wayne Mueller's book about a life of enough. He was sharing a story about E.E. E. Cummings, that great little poet with all the lowercase letters. And E.E. E. Cummings loved to write his poetry in the morning. You know, that was the time he felt really inspired and his wife would encourage him. So one morning she, well, she made breakfast most mornings, but made a breakfast and then he went off to do his work. And when she called him hours later back to come for lunch, he came back into the kitchen with a great big smile on his face and she goes, oh, you look really happy. He said, I am. And she said, did you have a productive day of writing? And he said, absolutely. When I left this morning after breakfast, I took a comma out, and right before you called me in, I put the comma back in. <laughs> he got to decide how to interpret that. How many of us would be kicking ourselves that we didn't get enough done? But he knew that that was his creative expression for that day. Well, taking it to a whole nother extreme. I watched The Color of Freedom this weekend, a story of Nelson Mandela's relationship to a prison, uh, a prison guard and during his time when he was imprisoned. And the difference he made in those rough and terrible circumstances and the effect he had on people and the changes he made in people's lives because he always saw beyond the experience to something more. And then we know what happened after he was released with, from prison and he held on to those ideals and they happen. The universe bends back to us. Bends back to us. And you and I need to keep in that energy, realizing that we are creating all the time. And be asking ourselves, what are we creating? Are we creating a life of a limited circle of judgment? Lack of forgiveness? Misunderstanding? Are we stepping in to enlarge our circle to see something more? We need to be asking ourselves that. And what I got reminded of in looking at the beautiful ideals this country stands upon is, what ideals do I stand upon? Where do I fall back when things get tough? You and I need to learn to truly train our minds and our hearts to have a firm inner foundation, a core set of inner principles that we fall back upon. Now, in our teaching, we, don't, we can all think different things. I'm sure in this room there's people voting for different people. There's pe many different things going on. But we need to be sure that our inner principles allow us 
to make sure that we are a force for good, a force for love. Doesn't mean we all have to think the same, be the same, act the same, believe the same thing, but are we a force for good? What inner principles do we stand upon? I know in the Sufi tradition, they actually guide their followers to ask a few questions before they speak. Is what I'm saying true? Is it necessary? And is it kind? And I would say, is it something that comes from the inner principles that I stand on? I know I got several emails this week from someone who really doesn't like me. And they said two things about me that I really had to laugh. And I don't mean laugh at anyone, but because it didn't shake me at all because I know my core principles are integrity and authenticity and responsibility. And this person said I was dishonest and inauthentic. And very, very boldly, and I had to look at that and say, this person doesn't even know me. How sad is that? And I felt, I felt sad, but I also could laugh at the fact, it's like, gosh, that's not who I am. It's, it's just not. And when we are so in tune with what we, who we are, and love, now I'm sure if they said some other things, I would have had a reaction. But those things didn't, I didn't have a reaction to that because that's just, I couldn't relate. I've so firmly established that within myself. Now, does that mean my circle's finished? Does that mean I'm as honest as I can be or as I'm authentic? No, but I'm evolving upward. And that's what those principles do for us. So I want to ask you, what are the principles in your heart that keep you a force for good? That keep you calling on God, spirit, love, infinite intelligence, infinite wisdom, whatever it is, calling on that first. Because that's, we have to have that direct line, that direct line that we call on spirit before anything else. And that's up to you and up to me. And the thing um, that I want us to do this morning is we can't experience freedom, and this is from Ernest Holmes uh, from The Science of Mind, until we release the bondage that we have created, created internally. We can't experience freedom. So first of all, as I said, we have to love ourselves unconditionally first. So are you willing this morning to free yourself from some of the limiting circles that you've put yourself in? You don't have to answer, but I'm going to ask you to just unwrap yourself for a minute. I'm going to ask you to really take take the spiritual ideals that we've been talking about this morning and own them for yourself, value, love yourself enough to settle in and free yourself right now. Free yourself from anything that has bound you from self-love. And no matter what your body or your mind or your emotions are experiencing right now, I simply invite you to know that wholeness and health and vitality are the truth of your being. Mm. Know that love is the vibration and stuff of which you're made right now. Love is the truth of who we are in this and every moment. Take this time to unhook yourself, unchain yourself, release yourself from any good opinions of others or not so good opinions of others. And know right here and now, just say, I am my own person. I am here to reveal the light and presence of spirit, that unique presence within me right now. I don't need someone else to be happy. Happiness is my divine right. Love is my divine truth. I am here to be an expression of spirit, a force for good right now. And just know as you vibrate out health, wholeness, perfection, love, vitality, as you absolutely vibrate all of that out, the universe bends back and returns that goodness, that vitality, that wholeness, that abundance, that joy, that happiness back to you tenfold. Feel that now. Feel the goodness, the love just permeate through you around in these beautiful circles of life, of love, of healing. It doesn't matter what the external experiences are. 
It simply matters that we, from the inside out, release the truth of our being, the stuff of which we're made, that center of God, of wholeness, of wisdom, of love, of perfection that resides within. Release it now to fill you, to permeate you. To simply move out as we enlarge the circle about who we are. Enlarge the circle. Imagine the circle of your life expanding in any areas that you have felt restricted or con confined or limited. Expand. Everything is vibration. It starts with vibrational energy right now first. Let it move. Let it grow. Just breathe it in. And just say, thank you, God. Thank you. And meaning the God as you, the God in you. And of course, as we experience that mm, love that we are, it brings new wholeness, new revelation, new opportunities that we don't even see. There's a goodness happening right now that we don't even know about as we send it out. But equally important, we must free others. Equally important. It's not enough just to free ourselves. I want you right now to think in your own life of any person in your life that you have in a limited circle of judgment or lack of forgiveness. And it's okay. Because I want to tell you, the story of the prodigal son, which is one of the favorite parables of Jesus, the son was willing to condemn his father, condemn himself, leave, go out and spend all his inheritance, make huge mistakes. He was, he was free to leave. He was free to make mistakes. And then there came that time when he was absolutely became aware he wasn't willing to use his freedom to suffer anymore. And so he used his freedom to go back home. And his father was there with open and loving arms. The same with us. We're free to make mistakes. We're free to learn. We're free to leave. We're free to forget. It's okay. But we must remember we're free to come back home. So whoever you've put in a circle of judgment, if it's a person, it's a group of people, it's time to let it go. Time to release them to their own experience. It's time to free, break those chains, to send the energy of love. So who in your life, again, a person, a culture, an experience, are you willing to let go of? Jesus said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Give, and it shall be given unto you. So when we free others, we're freeing ourselves as well. Again, from that beautiful book, Life of Enough by Wayne Mueller, he writes, in order for us to move well from the inside out, in order for us to move well from the inside out, to live that spiritual life of being enough, of having enough, of being a, uh, absolutely forced for good. And to listen to the right choices which come from our inner principles. And firmly and courageously act on them. We simply cannot do this alone. We cannot do this alone and just think we can be the ones. He goes on to say, it's impossible, isolating and even dangerous for those who because of their race, gender, religion or class are at risk for physical, social, or political harm. In this time of a lot of upheaval, a lot of really seemingly nasty things happening in our world, we must be sure we don't focus on hate. Yes, we need to take care of ourselves. Yes, we need to do what we know is right and true. But we must focus on the higher ideals that this beautiful beautiful country was established on. There's something more that wants to be born right now. And so I'm going to invite us right now to just close in prayer. As you surrender to the celebration of this Independence Day, as you surrender to this moment that's calling us to step into a greater, a bigger circle of life, this time right now as we dress in our red, white, and blue and have fireworks and eat good food and celebrate together, that we just know we're celebrating something greater that's possible. We celebrate 
the truth that you and I right here choose to put love first. Not meaning we have to love actions or behavior, but knowing that love is what heals on this planet. Love is the power that allows us to move beyond the concentric circles of hate and blame and lack of forgiveness into a bigger circle of oneness and unity and possibility. Knowing we ask ourselves just simply every day, what's the next right thing to do in this moment? That you and I come together knowing that we do put God first. We make that call. We have that direct line. To know there's something more is possible here. We live on the ideals of truth and abundance and joy and love. We stand on those. And we know that no matter what is going on in this physical experience, there's always something more, something good. Because life is inherently good and so are we. No matter what mistakes we've made, no matter what situations we've gotten ourselves into, no, ma no matter how much we've hated, or had a lack of forgiveness before, now is the time to increase the circle for good. Now is the time to enlarge our life, that we may create a circle that's big enough for others to step into, that we may hold out of many one. That we come together in a consciousness, not meaning we have to think the same thing or do the same thing, but we hold that we're all children of the Most High. You and I are each from one family and the family is God, it's spirit, it's love, it's good. It's time for us to remember. Oh, and as we breathe in that remembrance, as we choose to free ourselves from anything that has kept us bound, we know the harmony and the peace that we find in ourselves just moves out and permeates this world with good. It's at this time that we say, thank you, God. The God within, the God, the power without that's bigger than we are, that we can use. We say, thank you, God, for this recognition and knowing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we seal this by simply saying together, and so it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being part of this good we're creating. I love and bless each one of you and wish you the most beautiful, joyous, happy Independence Day for yourselves, your family, and the world. And so it is.